to you first of all, Emma. Uh, so much of an outpouring of feeling and love for Jack on hearing the news. But of course, it's all very personal for you. He's his granddad. Um, how do you think of him? Do you think of him like that rather than the legend? Yeah, I, I think what's been really striking actually from the thousands of messages that we've had is that all of the memories that people have had and the stories of meeting him even briefly, the person they've described is the person that, that we know. Um, and that's testament really to how genuine and real he was, because that's exactly how he was with us at home. Um, but yeah, although we were always aware of his achievements, um, to me and my siblings and my cousins, he was just a, a granddad and our memories with him are like people will have with their own granddad. He was very warm, very funny, very supportive. He would do anything for all of us. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult because he was a huge character and he'll uh, leave a big hole in our lives. Yeah. Was, he, was he quite competitive, Emma? Because I'd imagine that, you know, any of these professional sportsmen that I know, even once they've retired, they find it hard to lose at anything. <laughs> it's funny you say that because, yes, and that really applied to even at home. Uh, no matter how old we are, he would never let us win at games. He would always <laughs> cheat at cards <laughs> and at pool. Um, he always had this... Uh, jar of sweets next to his armchair in the living room and he would never share them with us um, no matter how old we were um, so yeah those aspects of his character were the same at home but at the same time he was extremely warm very tactile very present in our lives um, and he would have done anything for us uh, I always remember when I went to Newcastle University and uh, when I first went there I found it all quite daunting actually and uh, I would ring my grandparents, and they would be there in a flash, pick me up, we'd get fish and chips on the way home, and, you know, their house was a, a safe safe space for me, and it will be it will be hard if not being there anymore. Yeah, I yeah. can imagine. I, Mick, I, he was an extraordinary uh, man. I met him on a couple of occasions, and he just had this capacity of filling the room. You knew, always knew he was there, uh, only briefly that I met him, but, but it struck me uh, in those brief occasions just what a presence he had. What was he like to play for uh, as a manager? Uh, good morning, Ben. Good morning, Kate. And good morning, Emma. Uh, and sincere condolences to you mm. and the family, and certainly to Pat, who we knew well. Uh, listening to Emma speak there, it is, um, he was a great manager, but he was a great bloke. And he really was a, a lovely, warm guy that everybody warmed to, all the fans. I mean, if uh, I'm talking to friends in Ireland yesterday who uh, people are saying it's like their dad has died, which is incredible. But as a, as a guy, he was wonderful. As a manager, very thoughtful. Uh, I thought very tactically aware. He made, I think, all of us, whether he made us better players individually, because we, we were a group of pretty good players when Jack came, but he made us a really good team. A team that got to the quarter final of the World Cup in 1990, and it, and it was all down to Jack. And I think if you asked any of the players, they'd all say, they all love the bones of him. And uh, everybody, it was the happiest 10 years of their footballing careers. Because he, he wasn't necessarily everyone's first choice. He didn't necessarily get warmly welcomed initially, did he, when, when he went to Ireland? But actually now is like a saint there, absolutely beloved, and, and has never bought a pint, <laughs> I understand, of Guinness or anything else. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's, there's some suggestion that he didn't buy pints, but I think that's because people went to the bar first and bought them for him because yeah. he was so well-liked. Um, he, uh, he really was just such a terrific character, and, and wherever we went, you know, there were hordes of people. Who, I, I remember walking down the street with, uh, with Packy Bonner and myself and Jack and the wives, uh, and some young girls came up and, of course, me and Packy, I think, pushed, puffed our chests out, thought they were coming to ask us. <laughs> <laughs> and they bypassed us and asked Jack for a picture and an autograph, which got us... Uh, we were a little bit miffed about. Yeah. Uh, he, wasn't the he wasn't the first choice. I think Bob Paisley at the time was the first choice and anybody else. But it doesn't matter that, does it? No. Yeah, what he did for, for us, for Ireland, was, was amazing.
Emma, I wonder what it was like for you walking along the street with your granddad mm -hmm. as well, because as Mick's just saying there, people would hoard towards him. He just had this, this sense that you could go and talk to him and everybody wanted to, to wanted a bit of him. Uh, was it hard work trying to get him from one place to another? <laughs> yes, I always remember going to uh, Beamish Museum and um, when we were walking around, we just couldn't get from one place to another. And we would get very frustrated, but he would stop for everybody. Um, it, no matter how long it took, even if he was out eating a meal or doing anything, he would always make time for people. He would sign every autograph, he would take photographs, he would ask people questions about their lives. Um, and that was a, a, a great thing about him. Um, I think that rubbed off on, on a lot of us, really. Um, I ended up, uh, as you'll know, becoming a reporter myself, working for ITV up in uh, Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. And uh, I think his love of talking to people rubbed off on me and, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's what I do. And so it's, it's been a huge privilege to be able to, to talk about him in this way. Um, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, I'm not sure it's properly sunk in yet. I've spent so much time talking about him and not very much time thinking yet. Um, I think that will come, but yeah, he, he rubbed off on all of us. That's gonna hit you very, very hard, isn't he? He, he was famously useless at remembering names, which I love him even more for, because <laughs> I'm utterly useless. Everyone was big man or titch or something, but the, the love and the fact that he knew people but just couldn't remember their name was always... Was that, that tricky, Mick, as, as a footballer, though, when, when your gaffer's mm. not got on your teammates' names right? <laughs> uh, there's a few he got wrong, I have to be honest, but it didn't, it never bothered him. I mean, he'd, he'd, have, he'd have team shapes written down on the back of a fag packet, Jack. He just made things simple. Uh, and, and, it, and we, we played it simple, but he, I did call others by his names. Let me tell you, people will say to me, did I, did I ever learn anything from him? I think forgetting people's names is one of them because that's affected me now. I don't know whether that's age or whether that's uh, whatever it's from. But listening to Emma talk there, you know, mm. he, he gave of himself. If, I think if I, if I think about it, somebody asked me the other day, and, and when you're asked just out of the blue, but thinking about it, listening to Emma, he gave of himself to everybody in Ireland and he would stop and stories of kids coming up and asking for autographs, a couple of young ones, and then all of a sudden they're on the team coach travelling to training. And, and he, everybody loved him. Uh, he, was, he was such a great character. But that's, that's one thing. He, uh, he, he interacted with people. He never blanked anybody. Pictures, autographs, stand and talk to them. And I think that's why he's, he's so much and so well loved by everybody in Ireland. There are lots of calls to give him a posthumous knighthood, aren't there? I'm sure you'd both think that was a good thing. It's a shame, really, that it, w it would be posthumous, but do you think that's the right thing to do? Yes, I do. I mean, I think he should have got one in the first place. I reckon if, uh, I reckon if the team now won the World Cup, I think they'd be clamouring for him to give them the week after. They seem to give them out a lot more easily now than they ever did. But uh, I thought all that... Uh, the England team that won the World Cup in 66, they all should have had one. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Emma, I was listening to Ray Houghton talking on the uh, radio this morning, of course, played for uh, your grandfather. And he said he went round to interview him at his house and he said, oh, can I see your World Cup winner's medal? And he went to get it and your granddad just kept it in an old tin. It wasn't on display, it wasn't shown anywhere with pride of place. He kept it in an old tin and, and Ray couldn't believe that he kept this such this precious medal. You'd think that'd be a shrine, yeah, quite. wouldn't you? Uh, did, he, did he talk much about his footballing success and, and did he wear that or was that all sort of kept quite quiet at home? Um, <clears throat> a bit of both. Like, in some ways, I remember my, my husband saying to me um, when he first met my granddad many years ago, that he was struck how he, he always seemed to find his, his fame uh, quite novel all the time. And uh, if people were saying things about him, he would find it quite novel and, and like talking about it. But at the same time, he was very modest about achievements. And there are some great stories about him lending his uh, 66 shirt to a next door neighbor for a fancy dress party <laughs> and, then for, and then forgetting about it. And the person brought oh it around goodness. about a decade later. Oh and he was goodness. like, oh, thanks. And he had not <laughs> He hadn't even remembered. Um, and I think that really reflects what he was like. He was extremely proud of everything he'd done, but didn't take it too seriously either. 
Um, he's, he saw it for what it was and he was a, a people person and um, I think he was most proud of the his relationships with people that he'd built uh, of fans and, uh, you know, some of the messages that we've had, particularly from uh, from Ireland and, and obviously from the North East and, and, and Leeds, have been incredible and uh, he very much loved those places, um, he loved people and I think he would be extremely proud to know that people loved him as much as, uh, as he loved them.